Namaskar a warm welcome to world news and indian perspective on all india radio this is gaurav sharma and with me is anita anand bringing glimpses of the major developments of the day from across the globe over the next half an hour we shall bring you the latest from the world of politics economy sports entertainment and more the headlines indian prime minister narendra modi takes part in the 22nd sco summit in uzbekistan calls for developing reliable resilient and diversified supply chains in the sco region amid energy and food crises india and russia discuss ways to deepen bilateral cooperation in diverse sectors on sidelines of the sco summit indian prime minister also holds bilateral talks with leaders of iran uzbekistan and turkey Russian President Vladimir Putin hails new centers of power at the SCO summit with Asian leaders. US announces 600 million dollars arms package for Ukraine. Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan agree on ceasefire after deadly border conflict. US sets up fund to use 3.5 billion dollar frozen assets for stability of the Afghan economy. World Ozone Day being observed today. And in football, Nepal defeats India in the semi-final of the SAF Women's Championship in Kathmandu. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with leaders of the SCO nations participated in the 22nd SCO summit at Samarkand in Uzbekistan today. Leaders of the SCO member countries include Russian President Vladimir Putin, Chinese President Xi Jinping, Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif, and Uzbekistan President Shavkat Mirziyoyev. Speaking at the SCO expanded format meet, Mr. Modi said that the pandemic and the crisis in Ukraine caused many obstacles in the global supply chains due to which the whole world is facing an unprecedented energy and food crisis. He said that the SCO must make efforts to develop reliable, resilient and diversified supply chains in our region. He stressed that this will require better connectivity and need for giving each other full right to transit. महामारी और यूक्रेन के संकट से ग्लोबल सप्लाई चेन्स में कई बाधाएं उत्पन्न हुई जिसके कारण पूरा विश्व अभूतपूर्व ऊर्जा एवं खाद्य संकट का सामना कर रहा है एससीओ को हमारे क्षेत्र में विश्वस्त रेजिलियंट और डाइवर्सिफाइड सप्लाई चेन्स विकसित करने के लिए प्रयत्न करने चाहिए The Indian Prime Minister added that India's economy is expected to grow by 7.5% this year which will be the highest among the world's largest economies. इस वर्ष भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था में 7.5% वृद्धि की आशा है जो विश्व की बड़ी इकॉनमीज में सबसे अधिक होगी. हमारे पीपल सेंट्रिक डेवलपमेंट मॉडल में टेक्नोलॉजी के उचित उपयोग पर भी बहुत फोकस दिया जा रहा है. Mr Modi emphasized that the world faces a major challenge of ensuring food security of all citizens. विश्व आज एक और बड़ी चुनौती का सामना कर रहा है और यह है हमारे नागरिकों की खाद्य सुरक्षा सुनिश्चित करना. इस समस्या का एक संभावित समाधान है मिलेट्स की खेती और उपभोग को बढ़ावा देना. The Indian Prime Minister said that millet is a superfood that has been grown for thousands of years. not just in the SCO countries but in many parts of the world the year 2023 will be celebrated as the UN International Year of Millets he also said that millet food festival should be organized under the SCO indian prime minister also said that the country is today one of the most affordable destinations for medical and wellness tourism in the world the who global center for traditional medicine was inaugurated in gujarat in april 2022 This will be WHO's first and only global center for traditional medicine. Mr Modi said that cooperation must be increased on traditional medicine among the SCO countries. He said that India will take the initiative for a new SCO working group on traditional medicine. Mr Modi reached Uzbekistan last night. 
Samarkand city has been in a festive mood since Thursday with Uzbek authorities throwing a party for the SEO delegates where Bollywood old gods were prominently played. Indian Prime Minister met with the leaders of Russia, Uzbekistan, Iran and Turkey on the sidelines of the STO summit. Discussions were held to deepen bilateral cooperation in various sectors. During the meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Prime Minister Narendra Modi raised the issues of food, fuel and fertilizer crisis, saying that concrete solutions must be found to tackle these challenges. He thanked Russia and Ukraine for assisting in the safe evacuation of Indian students during the Russia-Ukraine conflict. In the ongoing conflict, Mr. Modi underlined the importance of democracy, diplomacy and dialogue. On the India-Russia relations, the Prime Minister said both the countries are decade-long partners. आज का युग युद्ध का है नहीं और हमने फोन पर भी कई बार आपसे इस विषय में बात की है कि डेमोक्रेसी और डिप्लोमेसी और डायलॉग ये सारी बातें ऐसी हैं कि जो दुनिया को एक स्पर्श करती हैं आने वाले दिनों में शांति के रास्ते पर हम कैसे बढ़ सके उसके विषय में जरूर आज हमें चर्चा करने का मौका मिलेगा ऑन दिस ओकेजन रशियन प्रेजिडेंट व्लादिमिर पुतिन रेस्ट the issue of ukraine bilateral trade supplies of russian fertilizer cooperation in agriculture oil gas nuclear energy projects and visa free tourist exchanges he said trade between both countries is growing he said the supply of russian fertilizer has grown eightfold which is crucial for india to provide food security to a large population he invited prime minister narendra modi to visit russia During the India Uzbekistan bilateral meeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Uzbekistan President Shavkat Mirziyoyev discussed ways to deepen bilateral cooperation in diverse sectors including economic cooperation trade and connectivity both the leaders reviewed bilateral relations and exchanged views on regional and global developments on the issue of Afghanistan the leaders were unanimous in their views that the territory of Afghanistan should not be used for terrorist activities both leaders stressed the need to make concerted efforts to diversify the trade basket and enter into long term arrangements to promote trade and investment connectivity was considered key to unlocking the potential including greater usage of the chabahar port and the international north south transport corridor the leaders emphasized cooperation in fields like information technology healthcare and higher education The opening of Indian educational institutions and the partnership between Uzbek and Indian universities were welcomed during the meeting. The Prime Minister congratulated President Mirziyoyev on the successful SEO chairmanship. Later, Prime Minister of India met Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. During the meeting, both the leaders held talks on wide-ranging bilateral relations and reviewed the progress in the development of Chabar Port. They also discussed international and regional developments including Afghanistan. Earlier Prime Minister Modi held talks with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The two leaders discussed ways to deepen bilateral cooperation in diverse sectors. During the meeting both leaders reviewed bilateral relations and exchanged views on regional and global developments. Russian President Vladimir Putin hailed the growing influence of the new centers of power on Friday at the SCO summit. Speaking at the SCO meeting, President Putin said that the growing role of new centers of power who cooperate with each other is becoming more and more clear. He said that they are open to cooperation with the entire world. The Russian president said that their policy is devoid of any selfishness. He expressed hope that others will carry out their policies according to the same principles 
and will stop using the instruments of protectionism, illegal sanctions and economic selfishness. Kyrgyzstan President Sadir Javarov and his Tajikistan counterpart Imam Ali Rahman agreed to order ceasefire and troop pullback in a meeting on the sidelines of the SGO summit in Uzbekistan on Friday. The ceasefire comes following a deadly border conflict between the two Russian allies that escalated towards war involving tanks and rocket artillery. The former Soviet republics earlier accused each other of restarting fighting in a disputed area which has left at least three dead and dozens wounded. Earlier on Friday, Moscow urged a cessation of hostilities. Kyrgyzstan has said that Tajik forces using tanks, armored personnel, carriers and mortars entered at least one Kyrgyz village and shelled the airport of the Kyrgyz town of Batkan and adjacent areas. In turn, Tajikistan accused Kyrgyz forces of shelling an outpost and seven villages with heavy weaponry in the same area, which is famous for its jigsaw puzzle, political and ethnic geography, and became the site of similar hostilities last year, also nearly leading to a war. U.S. President Joe Biden has announced a new $600 million arms package to Ukraine. According to the Pentagon, the package includes high-mobility artillery rocket systems, night vision goggles, claymore mines, mine-clearing equipment, 105mm artillery rounds, and 155mm precision-guided artillery rounds. The Pentagon further said that the United States will continue to work with its allies and partners to provide Ukraine with key capabilities to meet its evolving battlefield requirements. A White House memo sent to the State Department yesterday said that the money will also be used for military education and training. The United States has announced the establishment of a fund to enable spending of $3.5 billion for the welfare of people in Afghanistan while keeping it out of the hands of Taliban. The amount is part of a total of $7 billion that U.S. President Joe Biden had frozen and seized from the Afghan Central Bank last year after the Taliban came to power in Afghanistan. The Afghan fund has been set up to protect, preserve and make targeted disbursements of $3.5 billion in order to help provide greater stability to the Afghan economy. U.S. Department of State in a statement said that the Afghan fund will be funded through the U.S. Department of the Treasury and Department of State and International Partners, including the government of Switzerland and Afghan economic experts, outlining that Taliban will not be part of the fund and robust safeguards have been put in place to prevent the funds from being used for illicit activities. The statement mentioned that the U.S. remains committed to supporting the people of Afghanistan. The country has been battling intense financial and humanitarian crises since the Taliban took over on 15th August last year. The statement said the disbursements from the Afghan fund could include keeping Afghanistan current on its debt payments to international financial institutions, which would preserve their eligibility for development assistance and paying for critical imports such as electricity. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the world news. Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi will release wild cheetahs into the Kuno National Park in the state of Madhya Pradesh tomorrow under the project Cheetah, which is the world's first intercontinental large wild carnivore translocation project. Cheetah was declared extinct from India in 1952. In today's hotspot section, we bring for you a news commentary on reintroducing the African cheetah in India. After a gap of 70 years since it was declared extinct in India in 1952, cheetahs would once again roam in the jungles of India. Come 17 September, the first batch of eight African cheetahs Five female and three male will be reintroduced at the Kuno National Park in Shirpur, Madhya Pradesh. A team of experts from Namibia Cheetah Conservation Foundation will accompany the big cats. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch the African Cheetah reintroduction project. 
he will also release the first batch of eight cheetahs being brought from Namibia into their new habitat, the Kuno National Park. For the first time in the history of translocation of animals, cheetahs will be relocated from one continent to another. The move follows the signing of MOU between India and Namibia last month. The African Cheetah Reintroduction Project aims to reintroduce the big cat in its historical ranges in India as per the guidelines of the International Union for Conservation of Nature or the IUCN. The big cats will be fully awake in their transport crates in the flight and will be tranquilized to keep them calm. Initially, they would be kept in small enclosures for a 30-day quarantine period. Their health and progress will be monitored at the holding facility. After finding out that they are completely healthy and subsequent tests, they would be put in large enclosures. The enclosures have been made out on a 6 square kilometer area where the cheetahs would be left after the quarantine. Cheetahs' health would be closely and regularly monitored. They would be released into the open forest only after it seems that the cheetahs have completely adapted to the local environment. A radio collar will be installed in each cheetah before the release for their tracking. Every cheetah will be monitored by a team working in 8 hourly shifts. An awareness program Cheetah Mitra has been created to raise the awareness among the people about the cheetah. In the run-up to the event, the representatives of the National Natural History Museum interacted with 15,000 children and students to create curiosity and awareness about the project and the species. The number of cheetahs across the globe has been on the decline over the years due to the loss of habitat and poaching. In India, the last three recorded Asiatic cheetahs were hunted by Maharaja Ramanuj Prasad Singh Dev of Korea in Chhattisgarh in 1947-48. It was subsequently declared extinct in 1952. The Asiatic cheetah once used to roam around from Arabian Peninsula to Afghanistan. Now, according to estimates, only 12 such big cats are left in Iran. Wildlife experts have raised concern that only 7,000 cheetahs are left in the world and it is classified as vulnerable in the IUCN Red List. Efforts were on since 2009 to reintroduce the African cheetah in India. Now, it may very well be yet another feather in the cap for wildlife conservation in India after the success of Project Tiger and Project Elephant. The main goal of the cheetah reintroduction project in India is to establish viable cheetah metapopulation in India that allows the cheetah to perform its functional role as a top predator and provides space for the expansion of cheetah within its historical range, thereby contributing to its global conservation efforts. In addition to having a viable cheetah population, the move will help re-establish ecological function in Indian grasslands that was lost due to the extinction of Asiatic cheetahs. A healthy biodiversity will be yet another advantage with the reintroduction of the big cat species. Over the next 3-4 to four years, it is projected to acquire 50 African cheetahs. It is indeed a matter of pride for India that as the country completes 75 glorious years of its independence, the fastest animal on the earth, the cheetah, is being restored and it will rekindle the ecological dynamics of the country's landscape. Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has expressed confidence that India will achieve self-reliance in defence sector by meeting the target of 1,75,000 crore rupees of defence production by 2025. This uh, includes export of 35,000 crore rupees. However, he clarified that self-reliance does not mean isolation, but India's resolve is to give hope and relief to the world. Speaking at an event in New Delhi on Friday, Mr. Singh informed that the country's defense exports have crossed 13,000 crore rupees as compared to 1,900 crore rupees earlier. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for the crores of people across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with the series Azad Bharat Ki Baat Akashwani Ke Saath. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through storytelling of All India Radio. In today's episode, we bring to you the story of the telecom revolution in India. Over 
Over the years, the telecom sector has helped India grow and transformed it from a poor third world country to a potential global power. Telecom revolution has led the country to the 21st century's modern India and to the edge of having the 5G network. Telecom sector provides foundation for lakhs of jobs, growing incomes and global connectivity. From allowing Indian software companies to become globally competitive in the 1990s to enable daily wage workers to increase their incomes as well as transforming the lives of farmers and creating a world-class technology ecosystem, telecom's impact can be seen across the country. Department of Telecommunications, DOT, was established in 1985 to groom telecom services. In 1986, MTNL and VSNL were set up to handle domestic and international services. Telecom sector was opened to private sector investment as part of government's 1991 liberalization policy. Telecommunications Regulatory Authority of India, TRI, was created in 1997, while the new telecom policy was announced in 1999 by the then Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. In 2000, DOT's service arm was corporatized and re named as Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited. Mobile services began with 2G cellular network and rapidly progressed to 3G and 4G. BSNL Chairman and Managing Director Praveen Kumar Purwar says, जो डेवलपमेंट जो 1990 किया कि नंबर ऑफ ऑपरेटर्स उसके बाद बढ़ने शुरू हुए मार्केट में कंपटीशन बढ़ा और टेली डेंसिटी जो बहुत कम होती थी वो आज की तारीख में बहुत तेजी से बढ़ी तो एक बहुत बड़ा ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन है और जो पहला लोगों की जिंदगी में जो बदलाव आया वो बदलाव था कि पहले मोबाइल अमीरी की निशानी हुआ करती थी अब लोगों की जरूरत हो गई एंड बीएसएनएल हैज ऑलवेज प्लेड द रोल ऑफ वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट वी नेवर लुक दैट आवर सर्विसेज शुड बी रिस्ट्रिक्टेड ओनली टू द एफुलेंट और अर्बन centers we always reach to the bosses the rural sectors so we will continue to see that, that the benefit of technology should not remain only few parts of the country but it reaches to masses and all parts of the country in 2008 mtnl launched the first 3g telecom services in india while 2g enabled digital phone calls and messaging 3g enabled internet data connectivity on mobile devices allowing for mobile internet access as well as phone calls and texting in 2012 4g brought faster data speeds and lower latency rates in the country which allowed online video streaming to be possible on mobile phones. India is now all set for 5G with higher mobile internet speeds and lower latency rates. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says that 5G would enable solutions such as e-health, connected vehicles, more immersive augmented reality and metaverse experiences, life-saving use cases and advanced mobile cloud gaming among others. देश आजादी के अमृत काल में अगले 25 वर्षों के रोड मैप पर काम कर रहा है। 5G टेलीकॉम सेक्टर में क्रिटिकल और आधुनिक टेक्नोलॉजी की आत्मनिर्भरता की दिशा में एक अहम कदम है 5G आई के रूप में जो देश का अपना 5G स्टैंडर्ड बनाया गया है वो देश के लिए बहुत गर्व की बात है ये देश के गांवों में 5G टेक्नोलॉजी पहुंचाने और उस काम में बहुत बड़ी भूमिका निभाए 5G will boost digital literacy programs and accessible and affordable e-health care through telemedicine. Department of Telecommunication targets to ensure higher broadband speed through 100% broadband connectivity with optical fiber rollouts by the end of 2024. India is going to host ninth session of the governing body of the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture from 19th to 24th of this month. The treaty is a legally binding comprehensive agreement adopted in November 2001 at Rome during the 31st session of Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations which entered into force in June 2004. The UN World Food Programme has warned that the world is facing a global emergency of unprecedented magnitude as around 345 million people are marching towards starvation. The Executive Director of the UN World Food Programme, David Beasley, said that 345 million people are facing acute food insecurity in 82 countries. He said that it is incredibly troubling that 50 million of those people in 45 countries are suffering from acute malnutrition. 
The UN Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Martin Griffith, said that the widespread and increasing food insecurity is a result of the direct and indirect impact of conflict and violence. He also urged the Security Council to leave no stone unturned in trying to end these conflicts. World Ozone Day, also known as International Day for Preservation of the Ozone Layer, was uh, observed on Friday. It is observed every year on 16th of September. The ozone layer, a fragile shield of gas, protects the Earth from the harmful portion of the rays of the sun, thus helping preserve life on planet. A number of commonly used chemicals have been found to be extremely damaging to the ozone layer. The scientific confirmation of the depletion of the ozone layer prompted the international community to establish a mechanism for cooperation to take action to protect the ozone layer. Indian Environment Minister Bhupendra Yadav on Friday said that India is playing a proactive role in the phase-out of production and consumption of ozone-depleting substances. Addressing an event organized to observe the World Ozone Day in Mumbai, Mr. Yadav said that the world is facing a climate crisis because of wasteful use of energy. At the stock markets, key indices rose for the fourth straight day today and the rupee posted sharp gains against the dollar, a report from the business desk. Sensex declined by 1,093 points or 1.82 percent to finish at 58,840. Nifty also fell by 348 points or 1.94 percent to end at 17,531. At the global stock markets, Asian stocks are logged losses following overnight losses in the U.S. stock market, except Singapore Strait Times, which ended flat. China Shanghai Composite Index plunged 2.3 percent, and Japan's Nikkei 225 declined 1.1 percent. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index fell 0.9% and South Korea's Kospi slipped 0.8%. European shares were down in intraday trade. Global crude oil prices were trading up but on track for a weekly decline on fears of a sharp interest rate increase expected to curb global economic growth and fuel demand. In intraday trade, Brent crude was trading around $92 per barrel. Back home at the multi-commodity exchange, gold futures for October was trading at 49,180 rupees per 10 grams. Silver futures for December was trading at 55,910 rupees per kilogram when report starts came in. And in the foreign exchange market, the rupee weakened by 4 pesos against the US dollar. The domestic currency closed at 79 rupees and 75 pesos against the American unit. Arjun Chaudhary for World News, All India Radio. And now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. The Washington Post reports nine dead in flooding after Italy is hit by unprecedented rains. The Guardian writes lenders urge to cancel Zambia debt as country faces economic collapse. South China Morning Post report says Chinese delegation barred from visiting Queen Elizabeth's lying in state. The Financial Times writes climate change intensified Pakistan rains up to 50% report indicates. And before we end the bulletin, a quick look at the headlines once again. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi takes part in the 22nd SCO Summit in Uzbekistan, calls for developing reliable, resilient and diversified supply chains in the SCO region amid energy and food crisis. India and Russia discuss ways to deepen bilateral cooperation in diverse sectors on sidelines of the SCO summit. Indian Prime Minister also holds bilateral talks with leaders of Iran, Uzbekistan and Turkey. Russian President Vladimir Putin hails new centers of power at the SCO summit with Asian leaders. US announces $600 million arm package for Ukraine. Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan agree on ceasefire after deadly border conflict. U.S. sets up fund to use $3.5 billion frozen assets for stability of the Afghan economy. World Ozone Day being observed today. And in football, Nepal defeats India in the semi-final of the SAF Women's Championship in Kathmandu. And now before we end, let us listen to Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan, by artists from Mexico.
And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.